card and present that card to the clerk prior to the start of the board meeting. Members of the public recognized by the chair will have three minutes to speak on a single subject matter submitted on their common card presented prior to the start of the meeting and the clerk of the trust will function as our official timekeeper. I may have that memorized some point. Um, the clerk will now call the roll and verify that at least five members of the trust are physically present for today's meeting. Here. Hart is online. Uh, Member Ferrero. Here. I'm here. All right. So a quorum of the board is physically present. Therefore, there is no need to determine an extraordinary circumstance uh, for participation any uh, other way, uh, unless anybody has requested an emergency. Okay, and Agent Michael. Okay, so she says Member Twombly has requested, and so I have a question. Do we have to address the basis for that? Yeah, we ask her what the emergency is, and then we decide if. It's okay, so we need to know what the nature of the emergency is, so we can decide whether or not that qualifies. She is positive for COVID um, and still in quarantine phase. Oh, I, yeah, I would move. Yeah, I would move member Twomley um, be able to participate and vote remotely due to the emergency. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Do you have any discussion? Any public discussion? Not. Uh, all of, in favor? Aye. Uh, anyone opposed? And I'm an aye as well. All right. Move, move approval of the agenda and consent agenda. We have a motion for approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Is there any item on the consent agenda that anyone needs to pull? If not, uh, any public comment on the agenda? Hearing none, everyone in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Uh, this is the opportunity for general public comment. Do we have any comment cards, Ashley? Mr. Weisberg from the River Phoenix Center for Peace Building. Yes, please. Welcome. Great. So, Madam Chair, thank you and, and our board. Um, yeah, I, my name is Jeffrey Weisberg with the River Phoenix Center for Peace Building. And um, I didn't know when the opportunity would come to speak, but we as an organization have been in Gainesville for 10 years and uh, providing and promoting best and next practices and principles of peacemaking and peace building. And one of those is restorative justice. Um, and so we have had a contract and a relationship with the uh, Broward County Children's Trust uh, and um, for the last six years or so. And we have been the pr prime provider of restorative justice training, coaching and mentoring for their youth uh, volunteers and staff of many different organizations down here. So we have um, submitted a proposal a couple of times and was not selected uh, because we didn't fit a certain criteria. And so what we are asking for this body to consider is how do organizations do professional development and uh, I don't know if you call them enhancements, but other ways of equipping practitioners and, and um, volunteers in various various fields of, of practice and study, ours being uh, the restorative justice. And so we have found that um, there are a wide range of different disruptive behaviors that may arise in different programming. And so uh, looking at how to equip these um, staff and adults to deal with conflict uh, and, and when they have to actually leave a program, how they may re-enter that program. So it was really just to put that back um, into this space a little bit more for um, what are the mechanisms that we may um, utilize to be able to get funding to provide this services funded through the, the trust. Thank you. Um and I am familiar with your services. So I would say a couple of things. First is we're in the middle of, well, no, we're at the very beginning of developing a new strategic plan and looking at how we allocate and what we allocate 
so areas that will require funding. Um, and, and so that may be an opportunity as that evolves. There will be uh, a listening process for that that can, will include providers, so I would very much encourage you to be part of that. And I think I would also encourage you to talk to staff um, I know, uh, for example, with some of the providers that are enrichment providers in the summer and after school space, they've been built and in, incorporated into the budget. So if training for staff is something that they wish to incorporate in a budget, that could certainly be a line item that could be funded via um, trust dollars. Christy, did I, is that anything I've left out that you want to add? Um, yeah, we did have an opportunity last week to speak with Mrs. Goldwire. And um, in the Broward Trust, they actually have a line item there for restorative justice. Um, so it's just something in terms of the overall approach, again, for your strategic planning to consider of alternative um, dispute resolution practices. So Those meetings are open to the public. I would very much encourage you to bring that issue forward as part of that process. Well, thank you so much. And those meetings, the meeting dates will be are posted on our website so that you can see when and where those meetings are held and definitely encourage you to be a participant in that process. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other comment from board members? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, Ms. Kitchens from the Child Advocacy Center. Okay. You're recognized, Ms. Kitchens. Come on up. Mike, there you go. Sorry, I thought that would already be on. Um, hello, Madam Chair and um, Children's Trust Board and staff. I appreciate the opportunity to speak here today. I just wanted to provide an update um, as to the Child Advocacy Center's um, waiting list. We have 73 children on our waiting list, so it's come down a little, but it's still about three therapists worth of um, caseload. Um, we were awarded funding through the United Way, and that was, I think, part of what we were waiting on. Um, and they funded the Child Advocacy Center at the same level that they funded us last year, which was $30,000 for our therapy program, which is about a half of a staff person. Um, so we could definitely still use consideration for funding for our therapy program. We have had even just in the last two days, a number of children that have been affected by trauma, human trafficking, gun violence, community violence that need help, and I just don't have the resources to do all of that. Um, but we are equipped from an expertise standpoint to provide those services and do it quite well. And so I'm asking for your support again uh, to consider our request for uh, funding for these crisis services. Thank you. Thank you. Any comment, Ms. Moss? Mr. Cornell. Um, it's actually a question for Jeffrey. How much is your contract with Broward County? Typically, we were offering two uh, in-person or virtual trainings a year, as well as uh, direct coaching and support and mentoring for the practitioners. And so it was somewhere in the ballpark of, I believe, $12,000 just for those two trainings and coaching sessions. So. Other public comment, Ashley? That's it? Thank you. All right. Uh, that brings us to the chair's report. Um, and my only report is on the executive director um, search. I want to thank both Katie Howard and uh, James Moore, who's our HR consultant, and Heather Akpan, the county's HR director, who's worked with me uh, to screen applicants, to put out pre-screens, uh, to rank those pre-screens. So we provided each of you at your seat a summary of uh, what the process has been. We had originally 25 applications. Um, for the position. A number of those did not meet even the most minimal criteria around degree and experience, um, let alone some of the knowledge, skills, and abilities we were looking for uh, in the end, or, and some who had degree, had specializations or experience in areas that were unrelated to what we're doing here at the Trust. Um, not unusual when you put out uh, uh, request for position applications. Um, so we did come down to eight that we felt met the criteria uh, and sent them all pre-screens. Um, 
the pre-screen was basically eight questions recording an essay re uh, response and um, in addition to information about when they would be available and what their salary uh, requests or requirements would be. Of those, six came back, and we each scored them individually um, and came back, and we had set criteria for scoring, what we were looking for in the answer to each of the questions, and then we, came, we scored them individually and then had a meeting Friday uh, at the Trust public meeting to go over our scores. There was a fair amount of consensus among the scores and then came up with three that we felt were um, appropriate to recommend. And those are the materials that you had at the dais. Um, their scoring sheets, their answers to the pre-screens, and of course their resumes, so you could take a look. Um, if anyone wanted to look back at the longer list, uh, those are available through Ms. Howard. Uh, so what we're recommending is uh, the three candidates that we would recommend move forward to the formal interview process are um, Kimberly Lancaster, Christy Goldwire, and Marsha Kiner. And then the, the, the board needs to decide whether they think that is a sufficient list, whether they want time to go back perhaps and look through. Uh, and then what we want to do around beginning to schedule interviews. Clearly there are 10 of us now, um, and so 30-minute interviews with each of us is not a single day, pr and then a, a pre general presentation, general board meeting is not a single day process. So this is something that would have to be done over a couple of days, I think, and then we'd have to be able to commit to those couple of days uh, to have a fairly busy schedule for us and for the candidates. So. With that, I will open it up for discussion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, I, I, first of all, thank thank you and um, your team for putting together kind of this process. I think we've got three excellent candidates from what I could see. Um, I would very much be in support of perhaps one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews via Zoom. We could do that over the course of the next month or so, I think based on schedule permit, I would, be, I would be very comfortable with doing that instead of asking folks to you know, put aside a couple of days based on their schedule. So I'm, I'm okay with doing like a one-on-one -on -one via Zoom and then having a public um, interview with each of the three on a scheduled board meeting date. Um, and I, those are my comments. Other comments from board members? Ms. Certain. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. And again, I'll echo what Ken said. Thank you all for the work you've done in, in reducing this down. And I know it, it to come down to have to schedule this with 10 of us is going to be a challenge. And I like Member Cornell's suggestion of possibly um, us doing it, um, the interviews, the one-on-ones through Zoom. And I would commit to a day. I would think it would be, if we since it's just three of them, and if we did a half hour or so, it would really just be in a four-hour block, we could you know, one day, four hour block for us if we did it by Zoom. So I would be willing to commit to that as well. And then the in-person interviews or whatever, however. In the other, other board comments on, with regard to that? Dr. Cole Smith. Uh, thank you. Is there, are the questions in the packet in terms of what you will be asking in the interview? And if we want to add or suggest additional questions, Will we have an opportunity to do that? The questions that you have in your packet are the pre-screen questions. Those are the ones they responded to in narrative fashion. We do not have questions for the individual applicants. Um, we have some options. We could all use the same questions, or, or we can each do individual. I don't recall, for those of you who were on the original board, do you remember what you did the last time, Ms. Certain? Um, originally, we had, everyone had the same questions that we asked, we asked the candidates. And you, the, at a minimum, we did those, I think it was five of them or something like that, based on the time we had. And then um, you, if you ask anything else after that, but we had the five the same. So we would certainly entertain having a standard set that you, you could suggest, that we could pull together. Um, the way we created the pre-screen questions was obviously we had two HR specialists who've done this quite a bit. I've done a few. Um, and so we kind of pooled our standard questions and then culled that down to, to a reasonable number. And I think if we culled it down to 
um, five again that we we could certainly do that. Uh, we also we did have a brief conversation at the meeting on Friday as to the public presentation, and our thought was to have each candidate. They certainly have access to the material on our website, which is fairly extensive, to ask them to do a presentation about what their vision would be coming into the position and how they would start off, what kind of the 90-day, what would you do, as, what would your priorities be coming in, um, so that, again, they have a uniform topic uh, on which to present. But certainly, yeah, if we want to come up with five standard questions that we each use in our Zoom interviews, I think that would be appropriate and helpful. And I'm happy to, again, have you guys send those to me and uh, Katie, Heather, and I can collate and kind of pick and choose a little bit if we get more than five. But I suspect those of us who've interviewed a bit have a standard, but they're not typically a very unusual set of questions. So, yes, sir. Um, so I, what I recall from the last time also, we submitted them to Ms. Ackman because she was helping guiding us. I don't know if you might want to go back and see if she has those because a lot of them came in. And the questions that we came up at with the five of us, I think she wanted to review them to make sure we didn't get into any quagmire right. HR wise. Oh, yeah. So, um, and I, I would say go back there, start. <laughs> I, can get, I can certainly get her questions. That's a great idea. I will do that. And then we're sure that they're not going to get us into any quagmire. Maggie, so... Is the plan that there will be a, a meeting and you will ask the applicants, each individual applicants, the same questions and they'll just respond to it? No, I think the qu questions are for you guys to use during individual meetings. That, that's what I was clarifying. So the individual meetings, the, the interviewers okay, used so a standard five questions plus any clarification they, they wanted to make. So th those would be the Zoom meeting? Those would be the Zoom. Okay, so what are, is there going to be... Um, I know that when we did it on the on the county when we were interviewing, we had you know there were three or four, three or five questions. They sat there and the chair would ask the questions. Or they, we they, we could do that. Or what I was recommending and talking to Heather and Katie was that they come in with a presentation that they're required to make, and then our questions would be in follow up to the content of their presentations. I, again, I'm open to whatever the board likes. That was just our kind of preliminary discussion of some thoughts that might give it some structure. So, is there going to be anything for the public? I know that w when some of the when we had the uh, managers, there was a social event um, with COVID and everything else. Do they do that anymore, or is that something we could certainly schedule something where there would be an opportunity? And and because that meeting would be a meeting where we might select someone, there would have to be opportunity for public comment as well. Um, but again, yeah, it's. I've done inter interviews of that level where we do have a social event where people have more of an informal opportunity to meet the candidates. Um, and we can do that at, it's at your pleasure at this point, what you would like to do and how you want to structure the follow-up. Okay, so as it stands now, there'll be questions that will be submitted that, there, that each of us will have and we'll all ask the same questions. Then there's going to be, a, they'll come in and they'll make some sort of presentation, a 30-minute presentation or whatever. 20, 20 minutes and then 10 for questions, okay. something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what we discussed. But again, that's up there for you guys to, to make a final decision about. That's fine. I was just going to say that I liked the focus on here's a, here it is, where would you go in the first 90 days or in the future? I think that's a great way to frame it for each of the three candidates. Okay. All right. Dr. Colesmith, did you have something else you wanted to add? I did not. No. Okay. The mic is still on, just FYI. <laughs> All right. Um, so do we um, want to do, so then on my, my next question is, do you want to have a special meeting to do the interview, the public selection process so that we're not, because this is a busy season, right? We've got budget and strategic planning stuff. Do we want to carve out some separate time to do the board interviews, uh, the, the the one that's at the full board? Yes? Yeah. May I? Yeah, so, what I, so I like that idea of what Commissioner Pinkison mentioned, which was um, the way I would envision this is let's say we set the interviews for a date in, say, July, the end of July. We set a specific interview date, public interview date. That gives us between now and then to each have individual Zooms where we're provided with five questions that we can all ask plus an open discussion. Um, then the night before that special meeting, I would suggest we host some sort of a event 
where the public could come and meet and greet the three candidates. I think what we did, Lee, or what you did um, before I was on the board was you gave each of them like three minutes to talk, introduce themselves, and then it's kind of a mix and mingle, really informal, but invite the public. And then the next day, we would have you know, a two-hour meeting or a three-hour meeting where they each give a 20-minute presentation, 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A for each of them, and then an opportunity for the public to speak to us, and then we make a decision at the meeting. I mean, I think that's, that's the most open and transparent way to do something like this, and I would be comfortable with that kind of process. Are you looking for, Madam Chair, are you looking for a motion to move these three forward as our finalists? I'm, I'm looking for a motion to move those three and then in general the process that we've just outlined so that we know where we're going and can start looking at dates because it's summer. We have a busy agenda and people are gone. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I mean, Just, just yeah. being perfectly you know, candid about 100%. logistics. So I, I, would, I would move that we move um, Kimberly Lancaster, Christy Goldwire, and Marsha Kiner forward to the three as our three finalists that we ask staff to coordinate with the members a good date for um, us to have a special meeting uh, open to the public for them to give a presentation and us to ask questions um, and decide on a permanent executive director and that um, if possible we have a meet and greet the night before the meeting for the public to interact informally with them and kind of follow the process that we've discussed. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further board discussion before I ask for the public? Ms. Bayer will come back with a date. Well, with possible dates. So we may need a doodle poll of the board just to see who's available when. Mr. Andrew, did you have? Uh, just on the dates, I would suggest if we could get it done by the end of July. Yeah, I'm going to be gone part of that time, but yeah. <laughs> Understood. I will be too. But school starts for us pretty quick. and. Okay. Um, time will be of essence right. once we get so maybe we can let's staff. try and let's try maybe for some end some some let's look at the dates and see where it may be earlier in July rather than later let's just see what let's do a doodle and see where we all land and hopefully we'll we'll come up with at least one choice that all of us or most of us uh, can make uh, all right let me then if there are oh I'm sorry Dr. Cole Smith oh, to the mic you can move it way close to you. It really will come. If we're opening it up to the public, are we just going to have one session where the public has an opportunity to interact? <laughs> or can we have something in the morning or something in the mm -hmm. evening? which would take on some additional time, but it certainly would make sure that different I, I, parts of the public would have an opportunity. I, to I suppose we could do something in the evening before and the morning of. Um, but, I mean, it would just then be who's, who's available and, and what, you know, I think you're never going to have, but, I mean, we can try and make it as accessible as possible um, uh, without, you know, making it in, impossible for the folks that need to set that up and do it. But, um, Mr. Pinkerson, your mic is on. Do you have a? No. Okay. All right. So uh, any public comment on the motion, which is to go ahead and move forward with these three applicants to have pre-screened questions that we use for Zoom interviews and then a joint a formal board meeting uh, on a special date to actually do presentations and, and further Q&A and select the candidate. Is that correct on the motion? All right. Do we have any public comment? In the back. Oh, please. State your name if you would, please. Turn the mic on. There you go. Thank you. Um, Jackie Hodges. I'm the CEO for the Early Learning Coalition. I just wanted to offer up, as we did last time, we did a predictive index for the final candidates. Um, if you would like that, we'd be willing to do that for you. Thank you. Just let me know. Thank you. All right. Uh, so back to us then. For, if there's no other comment, back to us for a vote. Everyone in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? And I also am an and I, Just for the record, I quite like that predictive index when we did it. It told a lot. <laughs> it, is, um, it is phenomenally accurate is all I will say. And if Ms. Agpan is listening to this, she will be laughing and remembering <laughs> mine. <laughs> yes, I remember the meeting. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, 
uh, we'd be happy to do that. I think the PI actually is a very useful, very useful tool. So uh, I'd be happy to have us uh, submit that to the applicants. All right. Uh, then moving on to the executive director's report, Ms. Goldwire. Okay, there it is. Uh, we have kicked off the summer with our Teens Work Alachua. Uh, programming uh, as well as our summer camps. Um, I've had the opportunity to uh, welcome the teens uh, by making presentations um, at events for uh, minority business listing as well as um, Goodwill this past uh, Saturday. Uh, so lots of teens have signed up. They're enjoying uh, the programming, going through different trainings, uh, and many of them started this week um, and a few last week. We will have a uh, full Teens Work Alachua presentation, um, I believe, in July, along with several other uh, presentations that the board has um, requested. Um, and I also wanted to mention uh, at the last meeting, there were several um, rec recommendations and requests uh, from the board. And I just wanted to mention those real quick. Um, there was a motion to have staff uh, investigate whether after school and summer camps were addressing strategy 2.3 and 2.4 and the team and I are putting together um, a mechanism to have our providers respond to that um, not only in a manner of saying yes or no but explaining to us how they may be addressing um, those strategies and so we'll have additional information for you there um, and then a uh, ask a CSC has been submitted uh, to our state association to look into uh, salaries as well as um, administrative um, percent for different CSEs across the state. Um, and then lastly, I want to bring your attention to um, the last couple of pages of the ED report where um, Bonnie was able to create a survey for our enrichment providers to respond to as it relates to uh, the funding opportunity that we released for a capacity building. We did send that email out to about 50, I believe I said about 50 providers. Um, the theme uh, as it relates to their responses have to do with timing, um, availability, um, and whether they had the opportunity to respond to um, that funding opportunity. Any questions for Ms. Goldwire? All right. Ms. Curtin. Um, and the team works, are all the slots filled up, Ms. Goldwire, for both agencies? Minority business listing, um, I believe their slots have been filled. What's happening is uh, as the teams are going through the onboarding process, for those that don't complete the process, um, are not returning the calls, um, to the staffing agency that's working with minority business listing, then additional slots will be open. Um, Goodwill has filled about 100 of their 110 slots. Um, and again, as teens are completing the onboarding process, uh, additional slots may open depending on how they respond to that information. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Ms. Goldwire? All right. All right, on to... Uh, Old business, the proposed millage rate and the tentative budget for Is this, do we know if this is, can you guys see a PowerPoint or is there something else I need to do? Let's go. Is it there? Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Can you um, make it just a tad bit bigger? Um, Ms. Goldwire, maybe put it on presentation view and then it'll um, down there at the... Yeah, it'll still be in iPad. You don't think uh, the little thing at the bottom? Okay. It's okay. One second while I locate the booklet, because then I might be able to tell you guys what page to look at, and then therefore it should be easier to view from there. So at our last meeting, we talked about uh, several different changes that you all were um, interested in the staff making. Um, and many of those changes had to do with the official numbers that we were waiting to receive from the um, property appraiser's office. And uh, what we have presented here on the slide is uh, four different columns. You'll see our 2021 actual, our 2022 amended, our 2023 proposed, which is from the original presentation about two weeks ago, and then our 2023 tentative. The difference you'll see there um, is the actual amount that um, we would receive from the property appraiser's office, and that's about a uh, $693,000 difference. So this slide is showing you what that tentative would be. Yes. Page 78. It is, uh, what you all don't have in the booklet is the tentative column, line four. Uh, maybe there's a different way I can. You have it? Tentative level one and a tentative level two on page, page, both page 73 and 70. Yes, you do. Okay. Uh, the, difference, the difference is going to be this number right behind. Yes. No. It's 73 there. What's up there is page 70. Okay. So I, I can see what the difference is. You have the tentative column. The difference is going to be your um, other sources item. It is going to show 1.3, 1, and on the uh, corrected form that I have here, it has been increased to 1,417,416. Uh, so that is what the difference is going to be, and I'll be able to explain that when I go to the, the next slide. So this is showing your revenue uh, for tentative, and that is at the uh, 0.5 mil of the 9.4 million uh, mi miscellaneous revenue at $46,667, which consists of uh, $5,000 in interest, as well as $41,667 uh, for the Pritzker Children's Initiative. Um, and then it shows you that we would need to use the 1.3 for fund balance. That is the proposed rate at the five mil, uh, 0.5 mil from the property appraiser's office. Question? Did you have a question? Yep. Um, so Ms. Goldwire, two questions. Mm -hmm. um, what would be the reduction in the revenues with the rollback rate? That was, I think, a Commissioner Pinkerson question. And two, um, using 1.3, million of fund balance, what would be the remaining fund balance at the end, the projected ending year fund balance? Okay. So my next slide, I believe, answers those questions. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so the rollback. What is that slide? Is that the sheet that was at our places that shows the rollback column? It may be a little different because we made some changes. There was one that this was morning. Not in the packet. It was in, it was right. at our seats. That has a co the final column is the rollback. Okay. This one is different, right, from the one that was in the binder. It was in the binder, but on the pocket. 
not yeah, hole punched in. Right. So they're different. Okay. So there were some changes made today to the form. So you have an example of what I'll be providing to you today, but I can provide you with exact details if needed. Um, if I am stating a number that is not in your form, just stop me and I can explain what it is. So the rollback rate would be the 0 0.4694. And the difference would be 8,859,925, which is a difference of uh, 577,575 in income for the trust. And that would be the rollback rate. Can I ask a question, Madam Chair? Yes. And I apologize, Chrissy, I'm gonna ask lots of questions. Mm -hmm. the, per this sheet that you handed out, the rollback rate is actually higher than the 2023 level one initialized uh, column. So if, if I understand correctly, the 2023 was what we were discussing, um, level one initialized was actually kind of the number that we were using in the discussion for the budget at the last meeting. So this number is actually um, a little over 100,000 more than what we discussed last time. So when you say there's a reduction of half a million dollars, it's really the new number that we were given by the property appraiser's office. So if, 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 we, want to, um, if we want to compare apples to apples, the rollback rate that, that, that in our discussion from last time, when we were first presented the budget, this, the rollback rate is actually $100,000 more than what we were talking about in the budget discussion last time. Is that correct? That is correct. It's, it's, a, it's a bit higher. Uh, do you want to explain the percentage that the property appraiser sends us for the rollback? In the beginning, when we were doing the proposed budget, we based our numbers on a 6% because mm -hmm. we were being conservative. Mm -hmm. um, That's smart. The, the revenues actually ended up being significantly higher, as you can see. What, what percentage was that? Do you know? Upwards of eight. Okay. Um, so, with the tentative at the full 0.5 mil, it you, it's almost a million difference. And then, if you did the rollback rate, you're looking at about a half. Okay. Difference it's from proposed to right. Right. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. You want editorial comments later, correct? Yes. Okay. Clarification questions now, editorial comments at the end. Okay. Thank you, Chrissy. You're welcome. Thank you, Nicole. There'll be more to come. So what we tried to do with this slide um, and the form that you have in front of you is give you all an opportunity to compare the two. Um, we have the income at 0.5 mil and then the rollback. It also shows you the interest as well as our Pritzker grant uh, for that total and then what we would need. So that general fund children's trust where you see the 1.325, um, really that should increase to 1.417 for the 0.5 and then 1.903 for the rollback. That is what we would need. So regardless if we take the 0.5 or go with the rollback, uh, the trust would need to utilize fund ba balance dollars to uh, balance its budget. For our personnel expenses, um, it's the 1.3 total operating, the 1.292, and the grants and aid total did significantly increase um, from the 6.3 to the 7.773, and that is a direct result of um, the motion made to increase all the goal one up to 1 million, um, goal three up to 1 million, as well as goal, goal five. Um, sure. And you can see that page in your packet on page 79. That, that was not, we did, if I recall correctly, 
um, we did not say that we were going to do that. We would say what would the effect be on the budget. So, right. so it's for seeing. discussion. Right. What we're seeing here is what the effect of that. We haven't approved the budget. It's all subject to change and, and, and board discussion and approval. But that, that is what this represents, is what, it would, right. what would, would happen to the budget. I just don't want to make it sound like we're, we're doing it necessarily. Understood. Commissioner Cornell. Thank you for doing that. I quite like that a lot. I hope we do that. And now we know why they two, sit where they sit. The, the dais would be very well represented. <laughs> well, we can negotiate in a little bit when we start talking about the rollback rate. And Maybe I can get you on board. I was going to say, and then they'll see this side of the dais just slide their chairs back. All right. As long as you don't call him Mike, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Ms. Goldwire, proceed before I lose control here. Uh, there was also a... Uh, request for us to identify those items that would be one time um, within the a one time expense within the fiscal year 23 budget um, that includes the 1.7 additional dollars in programming. Um, it includes about half of the cost for the listening tour. It also includes about $80,000 for initial software setup. Uh, for programming, which would be SAMUS, Well System, um, other softwares that we're looking at, and then also um, an additional um, 80000 for us to continue to uh, work with CRI to close out our fiscal year 22 with the audit. So those are the one-time items that are included in the uh, funding that would be needed for uh, from fund balance. And where is that? Ms. Goldwire? So it would be broken out throughout the form. It, that, that's a handwritten list that I have. It, it's not identified through. It was so 1.7 additional programming, 80 for the um, 80 for audio. CRI, 80, 80 for, CRI. for SAMUS, or software, not just SAMUS, software. And then an additional 25,000 for half of the listening tour allocation. Okay. So software and CRI 80 each? Yes. yes. Thank you. It's about two million. It's about 1.927. I, I had a question. I'm certain. Thank you. I want to circle back in um, to the something that Nicole offered. She said that they used 6% was used for something when it was actually 8%. Is that to project, was that the increase in the taxable property, property values? Okay. I just wanted to make sure I had that right in my notes. Thank you. Mr. Pinkerson, do you have another question? Um, I will, but not now. All right. Uh, I'm just keeping the mic high, hot so that you know, yeah. I won't say anything. <laughs> Let's see, are they, is that, were you there? Okay, so I think this is where we get to have the discussion. Okay, I do have a question. Can we go into the um, details of the fund balance, Christy? Yes. Yes. On the, on the form, it says that we have $10.5 million in the fund balance, correct? That is what the projected amount will be at the end of this fiscal year. Where do you see that, Lee? Where do you it's see that? in the middle of this page. Um, well, I'm sorry, the third. It's the non-operating sources beginning fund balance mm -hmm. and then it, um, it's about it's right after the miscellaneous revenue total oh got it thank you okay and then under that it says non-operating sources ending fund balance so so um, so what's the difference between those two it says you because you have a, a number that's much less than that um, in that in that column You've got non-operating sources. Beginning is 10.5, 10, 10. and then you say, then you've got a non-operating source ending fund balance, and it, it takes away most of it, and so you have very little left. And I apologize, I, I, I don't understand the accounting. So the after the 10.5 is again the projected amount after the end of this fiscal year. Um, we are requesting to use and the form you're looking at the 1.325, which would leave after we receive our income uh, or revenue, excuse me, the 
10.768 would be left. Would be what's available. Would be what's available in the fund balance after we receive our revenue as well as the Pritzker Children's Initiative revenue. Okay. As, as I read this, just make sure I'm mm -hmm. reading this correctly myself, that first line that's the ad valorem tax is what you're subtracting out of that non-operating sources beginning fund balance to see what you'd actually use up of the fund balance. You see they're the same number. Mm -hmm. So it's basically the, the amount we intend, kind of what we intend to use and what's left. That's correct. Okay, so the 10.768 10 would be the ending fund balance? Is that correct? The 10.7 would be the yes. ending? Yeah, that's what I thought. For the year? For next the year? The 9.174 is the ending fund balance yes okay where is that number no, no, it's it in be. if you're using a million three and you're starting out with ten five and you're subtracting out nine no you're not you're not subtracting out can i help yes yeah please because then i'm not if you go to the next if you go to page 78 as i understood the last line item of revenues item 38 other revenues is your use of fund balance. Yes. And so if you start at 10.5 and you use a million 325, that would leave you with 9.174 as ending fund balance. It's in brackets, but it's 9.174 of ending fund balance. Yep. Now, if they increase that to 1.417, then that would bring that number down a little bit more. But we're talking about an ending fund balance in the 9 million range. And then one time costs of about a million eight of additional programming software CRI and the listening tour. Is that included in the expenses budget or is that? Yes. That is. So that's already included in it, the tentative. It wasn't. In, so that's already included in the tentative budget. So we would be left with about nine million at the point five. If we did the rollback rate, take 577 off of that, we'd be left with about eight and a half million of fund balance. That's how I read those numbers. That, That's correct. Is that about right? Okay. Okay. So, of that, of that nine million that's left, Christy, mm -hmm. how much is spoken for? You have your reserves right. for contingencies. How, how much is actually? You have your reserves. You know, for like you said, for contingencies. That's a number Nicole is going to have to pull for it for you, but mm -hmm. we won't be able to give you that right this moment. Some of that is spoken for. Okay, so I'm looking for a number. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking to to know how much is is not allocated. So of that of that nine million dollars, how much is truly usable? How much because you've got whatever it's you know you want to have a certain operating amount, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. And you that that you're held in place, which is five or five percent, I believe. Right. And then. Um, we would have some other things with the county budget um, that that took away from the fund balance. You want to have, you also want to have, uh, you know, something to carry forward um, for that for the last months of the the year, um, so that so that you know you have money before the avalorum taxes start rolling in. So so how okay. much how much are we actually talking about is available. So we. I the number that you're asking for, it would be less about 1.8 million. Um, our funding policy requires us to have about two months worth of that operating budget. Mm. Um, so that's a number we can get for you, but it'll be less about 1.8, 1.9 million dollars, because Nicole and I did look at that number earlier today, and that's how much it is for that operating piece that we're required to have. And, and what we had, and, and I think y'all handled it a different way, you put the capital, the million dollars, which is essentially in the county's budget, would be called a carry forward. Y'all are taking that out of the actual budget, so it's not part of the 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 the, the fund balance. Is that correct? Are you asking about the building reserve link? Mm -hmm. That's that's part. That's considered part of your operating cost, right? It's not part of the fund balance. So it sounds like there's about seven million dollars that we have um, that's that's available. Is that is that correct? That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So this would use two million of that if we went with the rollback rate. Now I was using Ken's figure. You said about nine with the rollback, and so if it's so if it's if 
yeah, looking at this, the rollback we would need, if we did the rollback, we would need 1.9 million is what I understood, correct? Out of that reserve, out of the fund balance, I'm sorry. That is yes. correct. <laughs> I'm just looking for an ending number, approximate. And what I, what I heard, what I thought I heard was about $7 million. Is that, right. is that what you're getting? I, I, um, I'll tell you what I think. I think the million is not in any of the numbers. It's it held out in a in a in a reserve balance for the building. But it's it's not working for or against. Correct. Correct. Right. So I think um, at estimated ending fund balance, if we do the rollback rate, should be around eight and a half million. If we don't, it should be nine million. Um, and our, the reserves less, less the reserves that we that we keep. Well, the reason, so this is, so I didn't follow that whole discussion because personnel and operating expenses total about two point six million. No. So, so two months of that is you know half a million dollars. Right. Okay. But you, what the entire budget is what you? The entire budget is ten million. So two months of that is about a million eight million nine. Right. Yeah. So. But so that's in fund balance. Okay, so that would be so we would have an end result would be about seven seven ish. If you took that out of fund balance and mentally said that's reserves, yeah, we would have seven to seven and a half million. Okay, that's how I interpret that okay. question. All right. After this budget, that we have. correct. Yeah, that's what I came to. Which includes the million on goals one, three, and four. Yeah, it includes. So if you if you take in the the one point nine figure is being drawn from reserves, I figured we my really rough math was six point seven million. Yeah. Yes, on page 79, that's your programming. That's my sheet that I love that I tell the superintendent to look at. That's got your million in goals one, three, and five. That 7.7 .7 ties back up to your programming expenses on line 50 on page 78. So that, so that fully loaded budget of 10.9 includes those, those amounts. So this to me is a discussion about rollback rate and ending fund balance. Where do we want to be? So I, so I think we, we are we all clear on the numbers at this point or clear enough? Let the games begin. <laughs> <laughs> He's still my heart. Okay. Um, so so I, as I see it, I want to see if we want to frame this discussion. There's several issues. One is the rollback. And do we go with the 0.5 or do we go with the rollback? And then the other issue is um, how and if we move to use the fund, the, the reserve, or the, the fund balance, excuse me. So A, do we use it? And, and it's currently sitting as an example to us, and it's unallocated, so it's not assigned to anything in specific other than split between two goal areas. Um, and for Judge Ferrero's benefit, the, the sheet that Ken was referring to that lays out what the programmatic expenses would be is on page 79 in the packet. Um, so it's all unallocated at the moment. Well, it, that sheet ties to our specific goals, Judge? Right. Our and four it has specific unallocated goals. amounts in those goal areas that were for us to see what the impact would be. Yeah, and in, in, in there, the unallocated amount of that budget is 300000 in goal one, 500000 in goal Three or strategy three and nine hundred twenty-four and strategy four, goal four. So, in that we've got a million six seven of unallocated funds for us to discuss over the course of the year, which is embedded into our ten point nine million dollar budget, which I think is great. So, uh, do we agree that those are the the two issues that we're trying to? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I, I agree. Okay, so which one do, would you all like to start with, the, the rollback or the the unallocated fund balance? I think you have to start with the unallocated amount. All right, so let's start with the fund balance discussion then. Um, I'll start. I, I will, whichever one of you gets to the mic first, right? Um, the unallocated, I think going forward, and, and all this is, I'm trying to, the, my scope is what we're going to do next year, you know, thinking about the, the strategic plan plus what's going on in the economy. Um, as we go forward because I think that we need to start we need to think long and hard about our decisions um, as far as in relation to what we think may happen um, but I, you know we, we're setting a million in each each category which which I think the most important thing is to go through the strategic plan which 
as we go forward, it doesn't really sound like we'll probably have all the things in place until March-ish, you know, April, which is what, you know, pretty, pretty far into the, 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 budget, the budget cycle. And plus, at that point, okay, we've gone through the strategic plan, then people are gonna have to go up with the programs, you know, you know then we're gonna have to decide whether, we, we, and Tina, you missed this the other day, um, when at our last meeting, I, I, I said that, that, that tractor time was very important and came up with the thought that this zero to 18, we need to, we need to shoot it and start looking at it as, as a way of, of saying either the things that we're gonna do going forward are going to make sure that our children don't lose ground or we are going to see if maybe we can do something that will help um, achieve the goals of making sure that our children are, are successful, you know, that will be transformative, generational, generational changes, and that's how we should be looking at things um, and kind of to heck with the zero to 18 going forward. So, so um, I, I think what we need to do is, yes, we need to go through the strategic plan, and then we, yes, we kind of have this money in place, but I don't think it's really gonna get, you know, it's probably gonna be three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way into the year before we're gonna have any programs um, to, to spend in, to really spend in this. I, I, I don't want us just to go out and spend money um, and say, okay, we've opened up these areas, you know, let's, let's spend money. Let's hear what the public has to say. Let's see where we're missing. And we kind of go through there. If we want to put this money aside, um, you know, for a strategic planning, put an asterisk about that it's there. I think probably a million in each one is kind of generous um, based, upon, uh, based upon where we are as far as the, the budgeting cycle when it's actually going to come time to spend this money. So, you know, we can talk about it. I, you know, I really don't want to do anything too, too um, startling or new or whatever uh, until we've done this strategic plan because uh, we need to we need to put our money where we think it's going to do the most good. And if we give money away, anything that we do, and we tell people that it's going to be this is this year only, um, it's going to we can conduct a, a scientific experiment uh, as far as how fast san sounds travel from one ear through the head to the other ear because they don't hear it. Um, you know, there's an expectation that is created. So um, you know, as we go forward, I think. Y y I think the discussion needs to be okay. How are we going to how are we going to spend that million dollars per per category? Are we going to wait to the strategic plan? And if we are, then I think the million is probably too much um, because I don't think you're going to have that that kind of demand at that time. But if if we don't, we set a number. It's coming out of the fund balance anyway. You can come out of the fund balance later if something is dynamic enough. Um, so so um, curious to hear what everybody and 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 I'm. And the reason I'm, I'm going to be extremely concerned about the fund balance because everything is, is, is going, is looking like um, the crystal ball says there's probably gonna be a recession in the future. And I know Maggie's experienced it um, in, in her tenure at, at, at Meridian. It, it is a very crappy experience to go through a recession because you have to talk, you start talking about, you, you know, diminishing your services, or you know, cutting back on your staff, and it's it's a terrible thing. If we have that nest egg, you know, we can kind of hum right along. So we ought to be very, very, very judicious about dipping into that fund balance, knowing what's happening um, coming uh, coming in the future. And you know, if y'all don't agree with the the, the you know the, the economic forecast, um, so be it. Um, I think it I think it's coming, and I, and I know what it's like to to go through a, an experience like that. And um, having that money set aside would be a very good thing. Commissioner Cornell? Yes, me? Okay, so um, I agree with basically everything Lee said. The point that I'm, I'm going to say, or the counterpoint that I'm going to say is um, the last thing you said, which is it's coming out of fund balance anyways. And so if it's earmarked in the budget and we don't spend it, then it's going to be back in the fund balance anyways. And so I'm not saying that we should spend this money. That's why it's called unallocated. We should just earmark it. With regards to the recession, remember that the January 2023 property values is the ad valorem for next year's budget. And, and 
yeah, and I, m m being in the real estate market, um, and knowing a thousand people a day are moving to Florida, and knowing that you put a house on the market under four hundred thousand and you have multiple offers, I don't see Armageddon yet. I, what I see is a slowdown. So instead of houses going up twenty percent, they may go up fourteen percent or twelve percent, but they're still going up. And they're going to go up probably six to ten percent again for next year's budget. So I hear you, but I think we can adapt because we have a huge fund balance. So, but I'm a compromise guy. I'm here to make you happy, Lee. And and I also don't like having a yeah. I, I also don't like having a huge fund balance. And so, um, there are some things going on about an initiative in the public to where I think. Um, I, I, I would be in favor of doing the rollback rate this year, um, but I do want to keep these amounts unallocated. And so I, I want to keep these amounts in the budget. <clears throat> and so that would be my compromise, is that let's keep these in the budget, let's go through the strategic plan, and then you'll have my support on the rollback rate. May I ask one question? Certainly. Um, so can you do not want to go out and send out an RFP for, for programs until after the, the strategic plan we've gone completed that process yes and no so I know there are some major problems that we have going on right now mental health is one safety of kids is one and but I do not want to spend all this money but I may want to have a discussion about we need to add a counselor or we need to do some restorative justice or we need to do some more mental health but but it's a I don't want to spend it all no but I may want to have a discussion about we, we need to be listening to our community and be nimble enough to maybe do some things. Well, listen, the community would be through the strategic plan. Correct. Right. We also know who the providers are. We're going to allow uh, other voices. Okay. I, I, I forgot one thing that, that I wanted to add to the budget. I think we ought to set a million dollars out of the, the aside for the building, an additional million dollars for the building. I, I, I think we just need to do that. Yeah, so I think we need to do that. Thank you. Um, so I was, I'm glad I was out from the, at the last meeting because I probably would have completely melted down if I had heard you say um, to heck with the zero to 18 going forward. <laughs> Shoot that out. However you said it, I probably would have melted down. So you framed it differently. He framed it differently. OK, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't we it wasn't bad. It, it was talking about uh, if I can paraphrase and Lee, you can tell me if I'm wrong. What we were talking about is that we, we need to make sure that we're simultaneously preventing by booking the, at the very early, but then also making sure we don't lose kids at the back end. So thinking about who we potentially risk losing, which Matt gets you to the older age group in a different way of thinking about it and talking about it. Making sure we don't lose anybody while we make sure we're also preventing down, downstream. Yeah, okay. Because I, I want to make sure we're preventing, but I also don't want us to just say once they get over a certain age, they're irredeemable and we're not going to invest any time and resources in them. So no, that was not. Okay, so good. That's good. Um, I can I can support the the rollback rate um, for as for what Lee and, and Ken added to the conversation. But I do think there are some needs in the community that we know that exists prior to us doing the strategic planning. That I think it would be totally irresponsible and hard-hearted not to try to meet those needs. We can't accept um, unsolicited proposals, but we've heard enough from providers and things that we know that there are some things that exist and. As well as you know, we're hearing it with the school in the school system with school-aged children with the mental health issues that they're having, um, and we've had people come here and speak to us. So we can't like just like kind of ignore that. And it is verifiable. It's not like this is just something they're coming and telling us. They, this is verifiable, and we have this money here. I think it would be. I'm not saying we allocate it today, but I do think that is something we have there, and that is some, uh, the needs um, that are in our community. We we try to meet those needs in a very comprehensive way. And I'm not saying we just throw money out there, but there's a way that we can do that from the providers and we have been here. And I also don't want us to get into, uh, this may not be popular, to be saying, let us try to see what we can build through Medicaid because children and, and all are really suffering and we're sitting on a huge fund balance. So I think we should do that. But I, I would support the rollback rate. I actually came in here today with almost ready to just pull the trigger and I really asked to say what would point four would look like in our budget. I didn't have chance to, I didn't want to put Christy on the spot like that to ask her, but to really just kind of significantly go back, but I would support the rollback rate. 
Um, I would support it as well. And just one thing that I thought about around some of these unallocated funds, in addition to what others have said already, is that um, the cost for the existing programs, even of doing business, like we heard from Sherry today, you know, if she could find three therapists, right? They're, they're I think, um, from where I sit, at least finding qualified personnel. Um, and particularly in the social service sector, has never been more difficult. And so I think that we also need to think about how we're funding our existing providers in addition to where we're going moving forward. Looking at a cost escalator. Others on the board? So motion you, uh, after you, Madam Chair. Pardon? I'll do a motion after I hear from you. So, so I, have, I have a comment first balance and the fees and, and I think a couple things I think the listening tour piece will inform us before we have a formal strategic plan done and I think that will come in somewhat sooner than a formal five-year you know but I do think and one of my concerns if you just do the math if we're using an extra two million in fund balance and if we just said we're going to take another million to do the building that reduces that amount but if we're taking two million a year and we've only got another seven million left, you're talking about three and a half years of fund balance. And so I think that I'm very leery of saying one time money because nobody believes it's one time. Um, and I'm also leery of awarding money without us looking at the long run of if we're going to fund these, then we're going to have to cut back the other areas. So, so I think any way that we use that fund balance, we've got to be mindful of the fact that it's going to run out um, and that it's it, that we have to have a plan to pull back to an allocation methodology that, that doesn't over-prioritize any one area. Because we know there's more than $9 million, $10 million worth of need in the community. There just, there just is. And I also worry, Lee, I think in some respects, the rainy, what I would almost think is, is it would be prudent to have to your issue of rainy day is, is some of the fund balance, not just two months of operating, but a rainy day fund in case there is a hard hit that we can go back and, and fund some of those providers, which again then would reduce what's available over the next several years to go above and beyond what we're collecting in revenue. So. So I hear it. I hear there's lots of need. Believe me, I mean, I don't think there's a, some, anybody up here who's more of an advocate around mental health treatment than me. Um, but I think that, that before we fund things, we need to be careful uh, about what that's going to mean down the road for allocations in, in different areas and a plan to use up that, that fund balance. And that, that's my feedback about this. I agree with the rollback. I support that as well. I think one other comment. Uh, some of the agencies and organizations that are <coughs> Some of the agencies and organizations are asking for so little, you know, with the potential for doing so much. And so if we could address some of, the, some of those little things that those agencies want and need, uh, I would really advocate for us to go ahead and try to address that uh, as soon as we can. Thank you. Madam Chair, may I yes. get into to horse trading with Ken for a second? Um, Ken, it looks like in the um, in the amount of the the rollback rate, um, what is the amount of fund balance being used, Christy? How much is that in the in the With fund the balance? Rollback? Uh, in the rollback. One point nine zero three three nine five. Okay, Ken, you know. Using your prediction for next year, which which I agree, next year the you know the, the die is cast pretty much for what the you know the assessed values and stuff. So so say six percent of the eight point seven is about about a half a million dollars. So I think going forward, you know that's safe. Um, so if if would you mind using that number, say say six hundred instead of the one point nine. For the for sure for additional for those other funds for the time being, I don't understand the question. Okay, going the going. Okay, we know that going in next year's budget, there's there's going to be an increase. And I belong. Uh, yep. Okay, so so I'm trying to stay pretty much 
utilizing as little fund balance as possible. Okay, and and it looks like it's 1.9 for for this, and you've asked for 1 million dollars, which I think you said was a total of what 1.6 additional unallocated. 1.742. Okay, how much was unallocated? 1.742. Okay, would you for the time being until after the strategic plan or till next year's budget that we increase those that amount just say 600 thousand instead of 1. Point whatever. The amount in those unallocated categories down to 600 instead right. of right. So you have this level of comfort of fund balance being nine million versus 10 million. To me, they're just a lot well, of money. Um, it, it, it sounds like a lot, you know. But it's you put a lot. it into it, 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 yeah, more than our budget. It, you put it into the the rainy day situation. You know, it, it, I you know I was psychologically scarred by the experience, Ken. I mean, I, I know what it's like, and I don't and why. Yours is a little bit more rosy a picture than, than what I think. And I know that there are some differences, some major differences between what happened in the last recessions with what the banks were doing as far as creating things that, that made it scary. But all they got to do is jack up the interest rate a few, and you're going to see you know, the real estate market will, will be affected. You know, and, and depending upon how high those, the, the interest rate go, it could have a tremendous effect on, on the real estate market, in which case, you know, the, the kind of the thing, the shining example right now of what's holding up the economy is not going to be holding it up. And, and I think we need to be very leery uh, because while next year is okay, let's see what the Fed does, what, what, you know, what, what, what happens in, you know, with the banks and, and all that because, um, because your, your 14 percent may not be 14 percent if, if nobody's buying because they can't or the number of people in the, in the housing looking for the housing market is reduced. There's not the competition you know, that there is now, which is jacking up all the prices. Well, you put that 400 down and you get four offers and they actually bid up the price. You know, that, may, that may come to an end. Um, so, so I think, you know, in the next few years, it could be very, very difficult. So I'm asking if, if we know that that's a realistic thing, can we use that? And we still have the fund balance. But well, I mean, so I guess from my perspective, I feel like we are doing that because we're saying it's unallocated. It's not allocated. And so I feel like, I feel like we are doing exactly what you said. We're not, we're, but, but it's a play. I think, I think when you look at that page, and I've said this a lot. Um, I'm really glad that we've increased all of this funding for after school. Uh, I, re I really am. I fully agree with that. But I, I think we've got, a, we're starting to get to a situation here where folks are saying, what about the other goals? And I want to go through the strategic plan, but I want to send a clear signal. We are aware of these other goals and we are budgeting for them. And we may have to reallocate stuff, but right now it's unallocated. And, I, and so I, I think it's important that we signal that. And to, to reduce that from 1.7 to 600 is just doing the exact same thing we did last year. It's the exact same thing that we did last year. I'm, I'm gonna interject, because we, we have another agenda item before we close, and we don't have to finish this today, right? We don't need approval for this until next meeting? No, we've gotta do the tentative because we gotta send out the trim. Gotta send out the trim, all right. Then we have, at least have to do the millage. Right. And a tentative well, we budget, but we don't have to adopt the final budget. Yeah. Right. So, so, so the, we've got the millage down, so that we're I safe. I think there's consensus, but, but, uh, so what I would say is, between the two of you, the reality is whether we put it in there as a placeholder that's unallocated or we reduce the amount. Either way, we could come back to this board and say we've identified a priority. Here's how we want to go ahead and allocate. Or we didn't allocate enough and we've got the revenue coming in and there's enough of an emergency. So I think you guys are, are quibbling over a difference without a distinction. We're arguing today actually for tomorrow. You're, you're, doing, you're arguing a point that's a distinction without a difference. Okay. Sort of, kind of. Well, just just well, saying. Well, I gave him the rollback, so I'm glad he'll concede to the other. All right, so then why don't we take these issues up one at a time, since what we really need to agree on is the rollback or not for the trim. Uh, would someone put it one? I would move that we, pr uh, two motions, move to approve the proposed. motion that was signed. Oh, the request and action was two. Okay, so I would move to approve the proposed uh, rollback rate of 0 0.4694. And which will be in a modified resolution 20-22-06, 2022-06.
And are you saying we don't need a tentative budget approval? We do. All right. Yeah, and I would move to approve a ten, the tentative budget of I think it's ten. I think it's ten point um, ten, ten point nine. Say again. 10.901 as stated in resolution 2021-07 with the amounts unallocated to be determined at a later date and negotiated. We have a board. motion. Do we have a second? second? We have a motion and a second. Discussion? <coughs> uh, Madam Chair, if I may interject. Absolutely. Um, by combining them, based upon the precedent of the past board, you've made the judge ineligible to vote on this motion. Oh. Oh, we can make it separate. Take a separate motion. Because, um, we can't vote. Judge on can't vote on the budget. Forgot about that. I forgot about the millage. Can't vote on the millage. Yeah. So, first motion is just the millage. You said I was right. You were right. Thank you. Can you get a second? So the first motion is to roll second. back the millage. Yes. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Discussion. Mr. Andrew, you have your mic on. Do you have a? No, I was ready for my eye. Okay. <laughs> Well, we need to, is there public comment before we, we have a motion, a second. I think the board has exhausted this one. Do we have any public comment on this motion? Does not look like we do. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any nays? Thank you. All right. I think I have to abstain though, right? Not right. Are you this one, yes. So we need to mark me as abstaining. Correct. Yes. Okay, second motion move. We approve the tentative budget of 10.901 as stated in resolution 2021-07. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Uh, any further board discussion on that one? Thank, Thank you. you, Lee. Thank you, Lee. All right, any public comment on that? We do not have any public comment. Back to the board. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all. Let the record reflect it was unanimous. Yes, it was a unanimous vote <laughs> for the record. Okay. See how the rest of the discussions go. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. The ITN. Does um, I I know Ms. Twombly is on. Oh, Christy, one more motion that we that we allocate another million dollars towards um, the the building fund. So a motion that we allocate. Second. A motion a second. Any further board discussion? Public discussion. All right. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Another unanimous. All right. I'm sorry. Christy, do you know if Ms. Twombly was going to present on the ITN or has she asked you to do it since she's by? Okay. Uh, item 10 of your agenda is the listening project invitation to negotiate. Uh, those items should include the staff report, a resolution, and exhibit A. Um, as you can see here, the maximum amount of funding allocated towards this project is $100,000, um, a term of 10 months. Uh, this current fiscal year would be August and September, and then it would continue into fiscal year 23, October through um, June. The uh, eligible applicants, uh, are, we have our regular minimum requirements to bid, um, as you've seen in other uh, funding opportunities, but with this ITN, we also included experience working in Alachua County preferred but not required. Uh, we thought that was important as uh, our system mapping uh, RFP, uh, we didn't, when we restricted it just to Alachua County experience, we did not receive any responses to that. Uh, also experience similar to the scope of services. Uh, the purpose of this invitation to negotiate is to identify a contractor uh, to conduct a community listening project for children birth to 18. The goals and objectives are to ensure that various stakeholders have meaningful impact, a uh, meaningful input, excuse me, into CTAC's strategic planning uh, to reveal the findings that will allow the staff and board to develop priorities and strategies to address the identified, identified needs and gaps and to maximize the impact of CTAG resources in addressing the needs of Alatra County children. The overall use of the listing project is to make recommendations for our strategic plan uh, for the use of CTAG funds and to develop materials uh, and processes that can be used as a part of the ongoing efforts to gather the stakeholder input 
uh, to inform short-term and long-term strategies and investments. Successful applicants will need to describe their strategy and recruitment as well as engagement plan to collect information from the various stakeholders and to ensure high levels of participation. We expect participants to be parents and caregivers, children, service providers that are current uh, providers as well as potential providers and potential and current partners. We also want to see key informants included in the stakeholder list, which would be community leaders, could be individuals participating in Gainesville for all, pediatricians, faith groups, as well as other funders. Successful applicants should also uh, consider age, um, birth to five elementary, parents of middle school and high school students. Uh, we also want them to look into CTAC involvement uh, whether those are currently families accessing CTAC programming as well as those not accessing uh, CTAC programming. Geography, which means we want to ensure that uh, the stakeholders, stakeholders are throughout Alachua County, so our urban and rural area. And then looking at vulnerable populations. Um, we have defined that as uh, victims of domestic violence, immigrants, families that with housing insecurities, juvenile justice involvement, pregnant women, new mothers, and families with uh, special needs children. It is expected that the applicant will employ a number of data collection methods that could include interviews, focus groups, uh, community meetings, and possibly uh, surveys. Uh, in describing the proposed detailed data collection plan and timeline, we expect the applicant to consider utilizing a strength-based, equity-informed approach, uh, ensuring appropriate sampling of key stakeholders, and as mentioned earlier, utilizing trusted partnerships and community members to recruit participants, ensuring consideration is given to provide uh, accessibility and inclusion for all, and ensuring proper documentation and records for all are um, all that information is uh, collected. The evaluation criteria, um, as you can see here, it is broken down in different, um, different areas, record of past experience, project plan, subcontracting, sub and price, and each has an individual weight that will be used to calculate scores when the review team provides their final score for each applicant. Uh, the timeline of project phases and deliverables can also be found within your packet. It includes the timeline for the planning, uh, data collection, analysis, communication, um, and that communication is uh, broken out into initial reports, final reports that includes board presentations uh, as well as communication pro products provided to uh, the committee as well as the board and staff. Uh, with approval uh, during today's meeting, staff intends to release the ITN Friday, June 17th. A bidders conference will be held uh, June 23rd, and that is a mandatory bidders conference based on the discussion had at the May meeting. Uh, applicants will have the opportunity to submit questions via a web form that can be found on our website. The submission deadline is July 15th at 3 p.m. That provides about four weeks for the applicants to respond to the ITN. A review period, which will consist of application review and interviews of the applicants, uh, will take place July 18th through the 27th. Um, the funding recommendations will be released along with the August 8th board packet, uh, which I believe will be released on August 1st. We are asking uh, for approval for us to release the ITN as well as um, authorization uh, to appoint a review team and approval of resolution 22-08. Thank you. Questions for Ms. Goldwire? No. I thought it was really thorough. I, I was really impressed with the content and, and the scope. Um, the only thing that I would have wanted to see a little bit more of and I would ask them to include is not just asking community members what they need, but what they have. Um, I really think it's important 
communities feel like they have assets and we ought to know what those are um, and how they can inter interact with the trust to improve um, and, and have more scale or scope or success or effectiveness. But communities have assets and I think we need to hear that uh, as well. Be back, I would move uh, move uh, staff's recommendation, trust, which is to approve the release of ITN 2022-05, authorize 100,000 in the ITN, uh, approve the resolution 2022-08, and authorize the executive director to appoint a review team. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have further discussion from the board? We have public comment. Hearing none, back to the board. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Madam um, Chair. Board member comments. Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Did that approval, I'm sorry I didn't hear it, include the resolution? Yes. Yes, thank you. Board member comments. Anyone? We did have, have a, two. I'm sorry, go ahead, Dr. Two. I have a question for Ms. Goldwire, and then I have a comment. Um, let's see. A couple of meetings ago, I'd asked about the status of Children Trust billboards uh, that were posted around the county, uh, highlighting some of our successes. And I just wanted to get an update uh, on that with regard to the timeline. And if you could share with us a draft of what will be on those um, billboards and what uh, is the anticipated cost. Thank you. That's the question. Okay. Uh, we have started that discussion internally. Um, I will be delegating that to our communications manager. He has started to uh, price the cost of the billboards. Um, I was hoping that we would have some additional um, information as it relates to uh, our programming ending so that we would have uh, results of programs, um, different options to post on the billboards. But we will gather that timeline as well as um, options for uh, content for the billboards as well as, well as a cost for you um, at the July meeting, if that's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. And just uh, as, a, as sort of a little bit of an extra on that issue, I have asked the staff to start in the newsletter, including how much funding we've put out and in which of the program and goal areas so that the community also can see, uh, again, making people more aware. And, and then just an acknowledgement to um, Tina Certain. Uh, a couple of months ago in the newspaper, they were talking about the school board having a lack of bus drivers, uh, which led to a lot of delays for children, and in some instances, absences for children. And so I asked um, Ms. Certain if she could connect me with some of the persons in HR, the Latter County School Board, and so we have met and we have come up with some type of strategic plan so that Santa Fe College can work with providing uh, some GED training or other adult education initiatives so that we won't have the excuse of a lack of bus drivers because they don't have uh, GED certifications. So thank you so much, I appreciate it. That's really great, thank you. Other board member comment? Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Judge Farrow, welcome. Welcome to the board. I mean, I think it's really great. I've worked with you on a number of other things. When um, Superintendent Andrew had his first meeting, I referred to this sheet, this programming sheet, page 79, which is this sheet. So I would ask that you just take that sheet. That's our four goals, and that's how we allocate um, preliminarily our, our funds to, uh, to these goals. And I really uh, appreciate your active involvement. That's number one. Number two, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my colleague here to my left, my, my twin. You know we're twins. Yeah, I've told you all this. Okay. Um, so she was um, elected. Is it second vice president or first vice president? Uh, president-elect. President-elect for the school board association uh, last week, and it deserves a round of applause. <laughs> We've got... Statewide representation from one of our school board members, and it's great. And congratulations, Ms. Certain. Thank you. Uh, and the only thing I have is we did have two submitted virtual comments that I forgot should have mentioned at the beginning of the meeting and did not. Uh, one was um, from Candace King thanking the staff and the Strategic Planning Committee uh, consultant, that's uh, uh, Dr. Raymond, for an excellent job in responding to and incorporating feedback 
as they develop the ITN. So that was very nice feedback, and I hope everybody on the committee um, gets to hear that. And then uh, to our discussion earlier, a little while ago, uh, Jim Reiser, who's uh, an active NAMI member in the community, uh, wanted to highlight the need for mental health services for youth and had some statistics for us on that. So we thank him for that. He is a, a passionate advocate. Uh, in the our need for what services? I didn't hear you. Hmm? What services? I didn't hear you. Mental health services. Mental, for thank you. Um, was that one of the sheets that was at your... Yeah, it was one of the virtual comments that were at our at our seats, but I did want to acknowledge those too. And so there, um, there being no additional business, we're adjourned. On time. Early. <laughs> <laughs>